Crossair Flight Lux 3597 was a scheduled flight from Berlin Tegel Airport, in Germany, to Zurich Airport, in Switzerland. On 24 November 2001, the Crossair Avro RJ100 operating the route, registration HBIXM, crashed into a wooded range of hills near Bassersdorf and caught fire, killing 24 of the 33 people on board. Aircraft The accident aircraft, a British-made Avro 146RJ100, registration HBIXM, was manufactured in 1996 and logged more than 13,000 hours and 11,500 cycles in total before the crash. The aircraft was powered by four Lycoming LF 507-1F turbofan engines. Topic. Accident The flight departed Berlin Tegel Airport at 21.01 Central Europe time with 28 passengers, three flight attendants, and the cockpit crew of Captain Hans Ulrich Lutz 57, and First Officer Stefan Laura 25. Lutz was an extremely experienced pilot with more than 19,500 flight hours, approximately 19,300 of which were as pilot in command. Laura, in contrast, was inexperienced with just 490 total flight hours. Swissair, a major shareholder in Crossair, had been grounded about a month before the crash as a result of financial difficulties. Upon arrival in Zurich about an hour after takeoff, the pilots were cleared for an ILS approach runway 14, but were switched to a VOR, DME approach runway 28 because of a noise law past 10 p.m. There were poor visibility conditions due to low clouds, and the cockpit voice recorder captured the transmission of a previously landing crossair flight informing the tower that they could not see the runway until 2.2 nautical miles 4.1 kilometers, 2.5 miles away. At 22.07 Central Europe time, the airplane crashed into a wooded range of hills near the small town of Bassersdorf, around 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles, short of the runway, where it broke apart and went up in flames. 24 people died, including the cockpit crew and a flight attendant, while nine, seven passengers and two flight attendants survived. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Passengers. The ill-fated flight was carrying a total of 33 people, five crew members, and 28 passengers were on board. Among the passengers were Melanie Thornton, the American lead singer of the German-based Eurodance group La Bouche, she was killed in the crash. The Eurodance group Passion Fruit was among those who were on board Flight 3597, singers Nathalie i.e. Van Het Ender and Maria Serrano Serrano were killed, while singer Debbie Street Martin and the band's manager survived with injuries. St. Martin's injuries were classified as severe. Peter Hogenkamp, founder and CEO of Swiss commercial blog service company Blogwork AG, and his business partner Jacqueline Badron survived the accident. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Investigation. While Captain Lutz was an experienced pilot, his competence came under close scrutiny during the course of the investigation, which concluded that the accident was a controlled flight into terrain CFIT, caused by a series of pilot errors and navigation mistakes that led the plane off course. This course deviation caused the plane to crash into a hilltop, 4.05 kilometers (2.52 miles) short of and 150 meters (490 feet) north of its assigned landing strip, runway 28. Flight 3597 had originally been scheduled to land on runway 14, the main landing runway at Zurich, a runway equipped with an instrument landing system (ILS) that provides vertical and lateral guidance to the runway. The CVR records Lutz and Laura discussing the 14 approach, as well as Lutz's request that Laura call out the height when the plane reaches 100 feet above DA decision altitude, the altitude at which an immediate decision to land or initiate a missed approach must be made. However, Flight 3597 was behind schedule and would not reach Zurich until after 2200 Central Europe time. This delay forced Flight 3597 to change its landing plan. 
Zurich Air Traffic Control Tower in order to comply with a new Swiss law designed to reduce airport noise from approaching aircraft over southern Germany in the late evening hours, must redirect all flights on final approach to switch from the ILS-equipped runway 14 to the less accurate VHF Omnidirectional Range VOR, Distance Measuring Equipment DME, equipped runway 28. This runway change forced Captain Lutz to abandon his planned ILS approach and required First Officer Laura to consult the Jeppesen charts for runway 28. The charts included a new set of approach parameters, of which the higher MDA minimum descent altitude was the most crucial piece of information. The MDA states the minimum altitude in MSL to safely fly above any obstructions or terrain in the final approach flight path before visual contact with the runway is made. Unlike a DA in a precision approach, an MDA requires that after crossing the final approach fix, the pilot is to descend and maintain MDA until the non-flying pilot reports that the runway is in sight, allowing the pilot to safely complete the landing visually. In contrast to the ILS approach, which displays lateral and vertical position, the VOR, DME approach only shows the lateral position of the aircraft and its range to the runway. Due to increased azimuth error associated with the use of VORs and lack of vertical guidance glide slope, the MDA is therefore much higher than a DA decision altitude for an ILS. Although both pilots were based in Zurich and the CVR picks up Lutz's query to Laura about Laura's familiarity with the 28 approach, which Laura confirmed he had, Lutz put the plane into an overly steep descent that brought flight 3597 to MDA far too soon. When Laura reported the plane reaching 100 feet above MDA, the CVR records Lutz asking Laura, Do we have ground contact? Laura hesitated before replying, Yes. However, flight simulators programmed with the time of day, terrain, and weather Lutz was facing at that time allowed investigators to determine that the only ground Lutz or Laura could see was the ground of the hilly terrain over which the plane was flying. Upon reaching MDA of 2,400 feet 730 meters, Lutz declared that he had ground contact and would continue on, then deliberately descended the plane below the minimum descent altitude MDA without having the required visual contact with either the approach lights or the runway, a major piloting error that ultimately led directly to the crash. The fact that Laura made no attempt to prevent the continuation of the flight below the minimum descent altitude also directly contributed to the crash. Lutz made an additional error by not monitoring his distance measuring equipment DME as he made his approach. The CVR recorded Lutz's running narrative on nearly every move he made in the cockpit, but did not record any readout of the DME after a check, verified by Laura, at 6 nautical miles, 11 kilometers, 6.9 miles from runway 28. Moments before the crash, Lutz's running commentary indicated to investigators that Lutz must have thought he was at or near 2.2 nautical miles, 4.1 kilometers, 2.5 miles from runway 28 because he said, "Someone said he saw the runway late here." Instead, Lutz was over 4 nautical miles, 7.4 kilometers, 4.6 miles from the runway and could not possibly have seen the runway due to the presence of a hill below the MDA of 2400 feet, 730 meters that would have obscured his view. It was into this hill that flight 3597 eventually crashed. Just before the crash, the synthetic voice of the Ground Proximity Warning System GPWS announced the radio altimeter reading 500 feet above ground. Immediately thereafter Lutz exclaimed, Asterisk 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 asterisk, two miles he said, he sees the runway. A few seconds later Lutz said, 2000, and then one second later the synthetic voice gave the minimums. GPWS message, which was triggered by the radio altimeter reading at 300 feet. Even though Lutz finally realized that his inability to see the runway meant he needed to initiate a missed approach maneuver, called a go-around, his call for the go-around came too late, the plane's engines were not able to spool up fast enough to generate sufficient thrust to climb above the hill that had been obstructing his view, and the plane crashed into the hilltop at 22.06 Central Europe time. Topic. Final report The report revealed that the pilot had failed to perform correct navigation and landing procedures on previous occasions, but no action had been taken by the airline to remove him from transporting passengers. 
Lutz had twice failed to upgrade his flight certifications to the more complex MD-80 due to insufficient comprehension of its computerized navigational systems. The report also documented Lutz's role in causing the total loss of a Crossair Saab 340 by retracting its landing gear while it was still on the apron, which led to Crossair relieving him of his training captain duties in 1991. In spite of those demonstrated deficiencies, however, Crossair continued to allow Lutz to fly passengers, reportedly due to a shortage of qualified Crossair pilots, and Lutz continued to demonstrate his overall deficiencies as a line pilot. These included a near-miss incident on final approach to Lugano Airport where Lutz came within 300 feet 91 meters of colliding with the shore of a lake during his final descent and a navigational error during a sightseeing tour over the Alps that took the flight far off its course to Sion, Switzerland. In this particular incident, Lutz missed his approach into Sion and circled over what he thought was Sion's airport for several minutes before passengers spotted road signs in Italian. The navigation error had taken them over the St. Bernard Pass through the Alps, and the airport they had been circling was in fact located near Auster, Italy. The final report of the Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau AAIB, German acronym BFU, states that other factors also contributed to the accident. The range of hills the plane crashed into was not marked in the Jeppesen approach chart used by the crew. Despite the hilly terrain surrounding it, the approach to runway 28 was not equipped with a minimum safe altitude warning MSAW system, which triggers an alarm if a minimum safe altitude is violated. The airport's means of determining visibility were inadequate for runway 28. The visual minimums at the time of the accident were actually inappropriate for using the standard approach to runway 28. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dramatization. The hour-long Discovery Channel Canada National Geographic TV series May Day featured the crash in a season 10 episode titled Cockpit Failure. See also Korean Air Flight 801 Asiana Airlines Flight 733 Air China Flight 129 Crossair Flight 498 Henan Airlines Flight 8387 Transasia Airways Flight 222 Alitalia Flight 404, another CFIT accident near Zurich American Airlines Flight 965